Okay, everybody. Hey, remember that film, uh, The Thomas Crown Affair? You know, either the original had Steve McQueen in it and Faye Dunaway, or maybe the remake. Uh, now you're talking. You like Pierce Brosnan <laughs> and Rene Russo was yeah, in it. Yeah, Pierce uh, plays Thomas Crown, a wealthy businessman who likes to steal very expensive things. Yeah, especially uh, fine art, antiquities. And Rene Russo is trying to catch him. This painting is worth a hundred million bucks. They shut off the air to drive out the tourists. Then they close the gates to keep everybody out. Diversion. Make a lot of noise over there. So over here in this room, you can take a hundred million off the wall and waltz right out the front door. Oh, that's good. Oh, yes. Yes, like indeed. Your kind of movie. <laughs> How are you? Meet this Philadelphia man. He's basically has lived a real life Thomas Crown affair as the good guy. That's the good guy, right? Yeah. Robert K. Whitman, FBI agent, author of Priceless Boy. It's a good book. How I went undercover to rescue the world's stolen treasures. And even though we're having fun with the movie. Sure. This has been dangerous work for you. Uh, over the years, yeah. You know, when you work undercover as a law enforcement officer or as an FBI agent, whatever it is, you, you do have to have your wits about you. You have to be very careful and, you know, be careful what you do. I can't even imagine posing as a mobster. I mean, were your, was your heart pounding? Were your hands sweaty? I mean, no, how do you pull that off? Chanel, whenever you're working in those situations, if you, are, if you aren't nervous, and you're not paying attention, okay? So, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to be nervous. When you stop being nervous, you should stop doing it. You're getting you know? famous, too. <laughs> All over national television. Look at this great article about you in the Inky today. Uh, or not. But anyway, there's a great article there in the go. Inquirer today. It takes a sleuth. And boy, what a great career you've had. You actually started the unit with the FBI to, to discover yeah. and find the artwork. Right, right. And I was in Philadelphia for 20 years working cases. For, for two of the first cases I ever did were in Philadelphia. It involved the University of Pennsylvania yeah. and the Rodin Museum. Uh, after we were successful with that, the FBI decided we needed to start a team. So in 2005, I actually founded the National Art Crime Team, which is Good made up you. of 13 agents. Yeah. You, you mentioned Rodin, and uh, th there was a, a skull, a head that was missing, a That's piece right. of sculpture. Where'd you find that? Well, actually, it was, uh, I think it was up on Pine Street. So we ended up finding it. Uh, wow. and it was uh, wrapped up in a, uh, a, a brown piece of paper hidden under a hot water heater. Priceless. Priceless. And mm -hmm. that's, that particular piece is the, uh, the, one of the sculptures that started the Impressionist movement in France. Wow. Sure. And um, obviously some um, important memorabilia from the Civil War. We oh. have the soldiers. Talk to us about that one and the Civil War flag. Yeah, well, the battle flag we recovered in 1999 was uh, priceless itself. Look it's, at this one. Yeah, that's the story that's in the Inquirer today. It's, part of, it's one of the excerpts from the, uh, from the actual the book. flag behind you? That's correct. That's, that is the battle flag of the 12th Regiment Corps d'Afrique, which is one of the first African-American regiments in the United States. Wow. What about the Bill of Rights? No yeah. more Philadelphia than that. Well, th that Bill of Rights actually belonged to the state of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. and it, was, uh, it was stolen back in 1865. There's a shot of it there. In 1865 by a Union soldier who was traveling back up the, the East Coast from Atlanta. Yeah. When he took over uh, the State House in Raleigh, North Carolina, he went into the State House and literally stole the Bill of Rights. Wow. wow. Oh, but a lot of original. paintings, like Rembrandt's, Monet's, Chagall's, and all that, but you found a Rembrandt. Yeah, well, we recovered that Rembrandt in an undercover operation in Copenhagen, Denmark. How are people, who's stealing these things? I always wonder about that when you hear a painting <laughs> that's being stolen. You know, people can't, do they just come in and take it off the wall, or is it some complex, yeah. you know? Thomas well, Crown. <laughs> yeah, no, Thomas Crown. Well, you know, the, the thing is this. You know, the people who steal these paintings are not Thomas Crowns. They, they are no. just your common criminals. And what they're doing is they're trying to make money. And, and, mm -hmm. and they use them for two reasons. We don't have too much of this going on in the United States. But in Europe, they steal the paintings to, number one, try to sell them. If they can't sell them, they keep them. And they use them as kind of like get-out-of-jail-free cards. Mm -hmm. So when they get arrested doing other things, they can turn around and use us to get out of jail. You've had an amazing life. Really thank you. Thanks for writing about it. Chanel, thank you. Priceless. Uh, we'll be at the University of Pennsylvania on Tuesday doing a, a lecture and talk. I just want oh, to let the okay. listeners know. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here's Sue.